Good morning, church. Happy Lord's Day. Praise the Lord. All right, God is good. And all the time, amen to that. Amen to that. Are you happy? Of course. Of course, we are in the Lord's uh, how stood in the Lord's day as we gather together to praise Him in spirit and in truth. All right. So again, a pleasant uh, good morning to to all. You know, in the, in the age of ours today, um, we could hear people saying that God talked to them directly. You know, telling them. Uh, tell the people to repent, all right? Uh, tell the people that I am real, okay? And tell the people that uh, judgment is about to come, you know, and other uh, revelations from God. You know, you scour the internet, and you will find many people claiming that God indeed talked to them directly, you know, now there's a uh, one particular website that I look into, uh, listverse.com. And let me show you a couple of uh, listings there about these people claiming that God talked to them directly. In, Chap in New Chapel Hill in Texas in May of 2003, 2003, now a married woman killed her two sons and severely injured her youngest son of 14 months. Now, her defense for the killing was that God had told her to do that. Now, another similar case regarding a Connecticut mother killing her six-year-old daughter and her seven-year-old son. Now, she said that God had told her that she must kill the children and that they had drowned while she was trying to baptize them, she told the police that she had saved the kids. In April 2015, a man walked into a Tennessee Waffle House and killed four people with his rifle. Now, he killed these people because God had instructed him to kill them. Now, so we see... Even committing acts that are forbidden by God, people would say and would claim that God talked to them directly and God told them to do so. And many are misguided. You see, this morning, as we go to our lesson, we will be able to answer some important questions regarding this matter. Like, number one, does God still speak to us today? Number two, how does God speak to us today so our lesson this morning god speaks how god speaks to us today now god spoke to people in many different ways in different ways now let us first examine how god speak to people in the past or spoke to people in the past god spoke to people directly in the past we can read that in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 just an example. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. So God did talk to them directly. Now according to our scripture reading, in the past God spoke to our ancestors, to the prophets, at many times and various ways. Now God talked through the prophets. Exodus chapter 24, verse 3 tells us, When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, Everything the Lord had said, has said, we will do. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 6, When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. So the Lord during those times spoke through the prophets and he spoke in dreams. 
In Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 through 7, probably we are familiar with Joseph the dreamer. Okay? Then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We, are, we were binding sheaves of grain in the field, and suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to mine. And the Lord said, he spoke to them in visions. Genesis chapter 46, verses 2 and 3. And that night, God spoke to Israel in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he said, here I am, replied Jacob, I am God. Also, to angels. Okay? In Luke chapter 1, Verses 26 to 28. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin pledged in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel appeared to her and, and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, during those times, God spoke to people in various ways and in various means. Now let us go to Job, in the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 15 and 16. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night, when, the deep, when deep sleep falls on people, as they lie in their beds, he whispers in their ears. Now, this was Elihu was speaking. Who was speaking to Job? Uh, Elihu was one of Job's friends and uh, told Job how God, you know, speaks to people. Now, we see again that God speaks in dreams, visions, and directly as he whispers to people. Now, let us continue reading Job chapter 33. And terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn from doing wrong. He keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over, crossing over to the river of death. Now, we see the purpose in these verses of these dreams. We see the purpose of the visions and God talking to them. Why does God or did God talk to them in dreams? visions and directly according to Job chapter 33 16 to 18 this were the very purpose the reason why number one it says to terrify them with warnings okay. now <clears throat> what does this mean this means that God is affixing them okay. affixing sealing you know, the word uh, for terrify is seal or affix that God is confirming, affixing, okay, that he would carry out the warnings he made known to them as part of his chastisement if they would not repent. In other words, God wants the people to fear the consequence of their evil actions. That's why he talked to them the way he did. Now, the second reason according to Job chapter 33, is to, <coughs> excuse me, make them turn away, okay, turn from doing wrong, and terrifies them with warnings, that's number one. Number two, he makes them turn from doing wrong. So God talks <coughs> to people to let them know, to let them know of their evil ways so that these people would be aware of it and they would turn away from it. Uh, that is according to Job chapter 33. And these people would turn to God. Now the third, it says, he keeps them from pride. You know, one of the very first sins that was committed was the sin of pride. Uh, during uh, Adam and Eve. Now, we saw this in the Garden of, uh, of Eden. Pride and motivation creep into the hearts and minds of Adam and Eve 
so they disobey God. You know, they don't want to be under God, but rather they like to be God or even more than God. That's why the disobedience. So God continues to reveal <clears throat> himself and his instructions to keep them from pride. Now, the fourth one, it says, he protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Now, God's intention, why he talks to them the way he did, was for protection against eternal death. He doesn't want the people to suffer the cost of their sins. That's why he talked to them the way he did. Now, in summary, God's purpose in talking to these people the way he did was to direct their conduct and behavior in a manner consistent with the character of God, being holy, that would lead them to life and not to death. Now, that was the very purpose. That was the very purpose, why God talked to them directly, aside, of course, from revealing himself, revealing his will. So according to Job chapter 33, those were the four reasons why God talked to them in dreams and in visions. <clears throat> now, having said all of these things, we see clearly that God spoke in ways he deemed necessary to reveal himself to humanity and for them to believe <coughs> and obey him so that they could have life. And that's the very reason why. Now, here's a question. What is the difference? What is the difference between those times that God spoke to them and our time today? What do you think is the difference? Now, during their time, why God spoke to them is because they don't have the Bible. They don't have the written words. They don't have yet the scripture. Not like today, we have the Bible. You can even download it, download it, and have it at the comfort of your, your palm or your hands. Right? So that's the difference. Now, I think you're getting you know, the picture of where am I going with this and why God had to speak to them the way he did. They don't have any written documents to read and get to know God like what we have today. You can browse your Bible, you can go to the internet and search the internet for anything that you have in mind, whatever it is that there is uh, questions in your mind about God and spirituality, and you can find the answer. But during those times, they don't have that. So God spoke to them directly in dreams and in visions through the prophets, etc. Now, let's go back again to the book of Hebrews. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Now, some of the truths I want to share with you that are uh, revealed in this text. Number one, according to the text that we read, number one, God has spoken to humanity. Okay. And number two, God did it at various times in various ways. We can read that in Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2. And then it goes on to say, in the last days, it's spoken to us <coughs> by his son. Now, in this last days, it means the Christian dispensation the Christian dispensation it means from the birth of Christ to his second coming so we are now in the Christian dispensation or the Christian age and there is a change in the method of how God speaks to us so long before according to the scripture God spoke in various ways to the prophets dreams and visions but in the last days to the Christian dispensation, God 
uh, in the last days is spoken to us by his son. So there is a change of ways, change of method, how God speaks to us. Now, the question would be, does this mean that God never spoke again during the time of Jesus or in the New Testament? No, the answer is no. The answer is no. Now, his voice uh, was also heard during the New Testament. Now, he did speak a couple of times in the New Testament. And uh, we can read that during Jesus' baptism in Matthew 3, 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While he was still speaking, referring to Peter, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. During Jesus' crucifixion, in John chapter 12, 28 and 29, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. You see, notice in both instances, let me go back to this first slide. In this first slide, God had spoken. It is to affirm directly that Jesus is his son and therefore establishes Jesus' Godship. That's why God the Father spoke, telling us, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, in the last slide, Jesus calls God his Father, and God the Father answering back to Jesus, which solidifies their relationship as father and son. See? As father and son, meaning that indeed Jesus is the Son of God, and that Jesus indeed is God. And God, you know, all of a sudden, when Jesus uh, raised his voice, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, God the Father spoke, and he was heard by the people, which proves the existence of the Almighty God. Because he was heard. The voice of God the Father was uh, heard. But of course, you know, the people were, were in denial and quick to say, no, it's just a thunder. A thunder or an angel. And they never thought of it as God voice. They deny the existence of God. They deny the voice of God. Okay. Now going back to Hebrews chapter 1. There is now a shift. There is now a change of method how God communicated to humanity through his only son. Now remember the transfiguration. The transfiguration. Okay. God the Father said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Or in other translations, listen to him. Now my question would be, why should we listen to Jesus? Why should we listen to him? Right? In John chapter 6, 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. The reason why the Father wants us to listen to Jesus Christ is because the words that I've spoken to you, Jesus here is the one speaking, are spirit and they are life. And in verse 68 of John chapter 6, but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of what? eternal life. Now after hearing Jesus say these words, you know, that you will have the, uh, they are spirit and they are life. Peter quickly grasped 
the meaning, the message of Jesus. Now, when Jesus asked the apostles, do you want to leave me too? Because many are deserting Jesus Christ. So he asked the apostles, are you leaving me too? Now, Peter was quick in his answer. And he said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying with you. I'm stuck with you. You have the words of eternal life. See, where would I go? Right? So Peter was quick to answer that because he grasped the meaning. He understood the meaning of Jesus in verse 63. When Jesus said, the words I've spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Now here's another question. Where did Jesus get those words? That he said, that he was preaching, that he was telling us. Okay. Where did it come from? Now a few chapters after, in John chapter 12, or uh, John chapter 12. So I want you to, to get the idea why God the Father tells us to listen to Jesus because the words that Jesus was telling us or were telling them are life. Now my question is, where did Jesus get those words? Now in John chapter 12, I have not spoken on my own. I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has commanded me what? Commanded me what to say and how to say it. Clear? In verse 50. And I know that his command leads to eternal life. So I speak exactly what the Father has told me. Remember in John 6, 63. Jesus said, the words that I speak, that I'm telling you, they are spirit and life. And in verse 50. The words that Christ was telling them came from the Father. And in verse 50, and I know that this command leads to what? Eternal life. So I speak exactly what the Father has told me to say. Now, this only affirms what Hebrews chapter 1 tells us. That God, in this dispensation, in the Christian dispensation, would speak through his son, through his only son. And that's why we must and should listen to his only son because God the Father had given everything, every word that Jesus would speak to us so that we could have eternal life. Everything that you know, Everything that we need to know to have eternal life, we should listen to Jesus Christ. And how are we going to do that now? Where are we going to find the words of Jesus Christ that brings to eternal life that God had given to Jesus? Where? Through the scripture. Amen. Through the Bible. Amen? Through the Bible. Now, one would ask, hypothetically, why did God opt not to talk audibly but instead go to Jesus okay, why would God opt not to talk audibly but instead go to Jesus now my answer would be good question good question now first I would say that God talked to us directly you know if he chooses to if he chooses to because he is God we should not limit God if we limit God, then we are acting like God. But we are not. We are so below God. But God, He chooses not to. He chooses not to. Why? We go to John chapter 17, verse 8. For I, Jesus, have given to them the words which you have given me, referring to the Father. Again, for I, Jesus, have given to them the words which you have given me by the Father, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Now, if the Father would directly talk to them, the people would not believe Jesus. They would not believe in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, uh, that he is God. They would not believe in Jesus Christ. 
it will defeat the very purpose of Jesus coming here on earth to put and put their faith in him. That purpose will be defeated. Okay. Now remember, God said again in John 6, 68, hear him, listen to him. You see, listen to him. It is because everything we need to know about having eternal life or to have eternal life was given already by God to Jesus Christ. That's why God said, you listen to him. So we listen to Jesus Christ. If God, if God would talk to us audibly, then we should not be listening to Jesus Christ. Right? If God would be speaking to us directly today, what do you think would, make, would that make of the Bible that you are holding right now? That will be useless. That will be useless. I would wait. I would wait for the voice of God to talk to me directly and get directly from him the information I wanted to, uh, to know. And I would ask him so many questions. Who created you? Okay. Where did you come from? Right. Why is there so much suffering in this world? Again, if God would will choose to talk to us, he can do so. But he ought not to. Because everything that we need to learn, that we need to know, he gave it to his son, Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, 9 to 11, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Now, two things I want to share and are achieved in this verse. Number one, okay, number one, the reason why God spoke through His sons, number one, it is therefore to give Jesus His rightful glory and honor. It is written there that in His name all knees should bow and every tongue confess that he is indeed Lord. That's why God said, you listen to him. Number two, it says it is also for the glory of God the Father. That's why until this very day, nobody had ever produced solid evidence that God talked to them directly. You know, God did it in, in during those times with many witnesses to prove it. Evidence. Evidence is a crucial key. Evidence. There were so many witnesses. They heard. They heard the audible voice of God. There's an evidence. But today, no witnesses, no evidence. Okay. Now, if, however, on the positive, just on the positive, uh, on the positive side, and not God talking to us and telling us to kill people, you know. On the positive side, however, if people nowadays would claim that God indeed talked to them, what do you think would be the message? What do you think would be the message of God talking to them? Now, just for discussion, what do you think? It boils down actually to two things. Two things. Number one, the message would be about God. Number two, about judgment. That is what is normally being claimed by those who tell us that God talked to them directly. It's all about God. It's all about judgment. Last Thursday, all of a sudden, I was, I was watching. Uh, there is a, a, a woman. I've watched this woman claim that God uh, talked to him. I talked to her. And... Uh, uh, she said that uh, she saw heaven and God talked to him. Uh, sorry, talked to her and told her to say to the people, the end is near. That's the message that God told her. You see, the 27 books of the New Testament, of the Greek New Testament, they were written about AD 47 to AD 100. You see, 1900 years ago, 
they were already written and judgment and Jesus coming near it was already taught during those times see in first Peter chapter 4 verse 7 but the end of all things is at hand the end of all things is near the end of the world is coming soon you see all those things were taught many many years ago during the New Testament see now what is it about God and judgment about God apparently told them that's different from his word from his written word is there any different or is there any difference none people claim that God talked to them because God wanted to tell the people that he is real that he exists and that judgment is coming just like what I saw uh, last Thursday isn't all those things already written in the Bible just like in first Peter chapter 4 verse 7 many claim that the judgment is near 1900 years ago 2000 years ago the Bible already tells us that the end of all the things at hand the end of all things is near the end of the world is coming soon what is therefore new nothing nothing is new you see they claim that there is God you go to the Bible you will know that there is God the message would be God told me to repent all of you to repent the Bible tells us that people claiming that they they heard the audible voice of God telling them tell the people to repent because the, the end is coming the Bible tells us that okay. now are those things not written in the Bible they are now my next point all the scripture is God breathed and is useful for instruction for conviction correction for training in righteousness so that the mind of God may be complete fully equipped for every good work now very quickly let me break this down it tells us that God breathed it simply means that the Bible came from God and the words of God so as you read the Bible God is talking to you and it is for instruction it means it gives us learning it teaches us about God okay? where we came from it teaches us about life and the important things about the spirituality and it says for conviction 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 of sin through the scripture we learn that we are fallen individuals we are sinful and we need our Savior Jesus Christ you know just like what happened in the day of Pentecost when they were all convicted when they were pricked to the hearts <clears throat> they were convicted of their sins so they turned repent and they were baptized it says for correction by the scripture we learn of God's way of proper living so that it will help us to correct our life for training for righteousness it brings us proper discipline so we can achieve a life that is conformed to God which leads to holiness and leads to eternal life and it tells us so that the man of God may be complete which means we don't lack anything and we are not waiting for something else because the Bible is complete and then it goes on to repeat itself fully equipped okay. no need for anything else now the Bible will equip, will equip all of us with everything that we need second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to what life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory by his glory and virtue God provides us everything God provides us everything that we need to know about godliness through the knowledge of him now where do we learn this where do we learn this now we get our knowledge of godliness we get our knowledge of God to the Bible John 20 31 but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name you see we get all this information through the written words of God 
through the Bible that you are now holding with you. The Bible tells us in John chapter 20, these are written. What? The scripture. And the scripture tells us that Jesus is the son of God and he is God. Right? The Bible tells us for the knowledge of him, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it tells us to say that the scripture, by learning and reading the scripture, you may know and you may learn that you may have life. And that is what Peter is telling us. Godliness. Godliness and the knowledge of him. The knowledge of him is we learn Jesus is the Christ. Therefore, everything we need to know about godliness, about eternal life, and the knowledge of him, about Jesus Christ being God, the Son of God, is in the Bible. Now finally it says in, if you go back to Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, okay, it, it tells us, for every good work, fully equipped for every good work, good work that leads us to godliness and soon will lead us to heaven. Now therefore, in the Bible, you have everything you need about God and godliness. That's why it says again in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, the words complete and fully equipped. It means we don't need anything or we don't need anybody telling us about God and godliness that the Bible hasn't told us. Amen to that. Now in Jude, Chapter 1, verse 3. Beloved, although I have made every effort to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt it necessary to write and urge you to contend earnestly for the faith entrusted once and for all. My question would be, how did you have your faith? Well, generally, the simple answer would be, uh, somebody told you about Christ or you heard it from somebody else. Now, Jude chapter 1 tells us, Contend earnestly for the faith entrusted once and for all. Contend means to fight, to defend, to defend your faith. Stay with your faith. Again, we get our faith in Jesus through the scripture alone and nowhere else. Then it says once and for all. Now once and for all from the Greek word hapax. Use of what is so done as to be perpetual validity and never need repetition once and for all and this was used in first peter chapter 3 verse 18 for christ also suffered for sins once and for all it means that christ would not would never come back die again and suffer again and be crucified again because he did it once and for all never again and that's what the meaning of the word once and for all hapax now therefore jude is telling us that we can never have another Bible again, to have faith again, wherein God would talk to humanity again in the way he did, would reveal himself through his son again, and would tell us to have faith in his son again. God would not repeat the process again, because it was, once, it was done once and for all. And remember, when Jesus was crucified, he said while he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. Jesus will never return <clears throat> and repeat his suffering and death. Your faith in Jesus, let me tell you, my dear brethren, your faith in Jesus as it is now, it is sufficient. It is sufficient because it is based on the very words of God. And that's the importance of what Jude is telling us. That the salvation we share through faith based on the scripture was once and for all entrusted to us. What is done, what is so finished as to be of perpetual validity never need repetition. The question, does God talk to us right now? My answer is yes. Yes. True. The scripture through the Bible his revealed truth now brethren and friends I pray and hope that this lesson this morning taught us to go to the Bible for God's revealed 
truth. Go to the Bible, read it for yourself, and study it. And also I pray and hope it helps us to be discerning about those claims that God talked to them directly and revealing other revelations. We must be very careful. And I throw out, I throw out this invitation to those uh, wanting to know Christ, to know wanting more about Jesus and want to have a wonderful relationship with him to come forward. Declare that Jesus is God, repent of your sins and be baptized for the forgiveness of, of your sins. Brethren and friends, the gospel is yours. And shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation. Good morning and God bless us all.